When you look at what the group has been able to do, their involvement with the arts, their involvement with the, the, uh, the K-12 system, their involvement with Colorado State University, uh, all of these prove to this notion that um, a company by itself can succeed until they are part of a larger community. And the group does that better than most. In my view, the company wasn't successful because of the kind of organization it had. It was because of the tremendous leadership that the organization had through the years and their ability to engage the people who were in the business, not only in real estate sales, but in community involvement and every other aspect of a successful business enterprise. I can see why they've been so successful. They have such a history behind them. Their footprints in this community are uh, everywhere and uh, very, very strong and, and very powerful. Never forget that we are building on what somebody else built. And companies like the group that are willing to, every day, those partners and all those associates wake up and do the job right and provide a great service, uh, sort of the classic example of how to take a great idea and then make it work by, by sticking to some very basic principles. They have helped build this community to be a better place. What greater thing can you be than as somebody that uh, loves our community and helps it become a better place to live? And that's what uh, the people of the group do. If you look at the picture of, uh, of the founders of the group, you'll see 11 founders there, and we always say there were 12. The person that isn't in the picture is Susie. When we started this, uh, I was 29, you were how old? 22. And a lot of our success was just longevity. I think we were fortunate to have probably three of the best women in real estate when we started. In life, uh, we're always looking for mentors, and one of my mentors was a woman we call the first lady of the group, and that was Betty Asmus. She was one of the original 12 founders. She was the top listing broker in our market. She had 47 listings that we submitted to the MLS. Uh, she really put us literally on the map with our signage and so on. Larry brought this MBA educated attitude to the table, and what mom brought to the table was this can-do attitude. She was single. She decided to get a real estate license at, at a time that that industry was predominantly men. The fact that it was predominantly males didn't bother her one bit. When we first discussed the concept, it was clear to me that Larry and the others were visionaries. Our goal was to create a place where everybody could could work together as a team and uh, synergize and bring out the best in each other. We've seen just some great examples of that over the years and probably the best example that I can think of is Susie. The company started to grow so they, they expanded uh, out to 3000 South College. I remember when I went in there, uh, uh, Susie Ewing was my secretary and to see her today, she's earned the right to be the president of the company. It just says that there's unlimited opportunity here and if, if you challenge yourself, the sky's the limit. You know, I can think of myself, Helen Gray, Kim Allen. Kim is a, a great story. Wasn't even 16, couldn't even drive. <laughs> and uh, DECA, a business program that the high school had, um, had been contacted by the group. They were looking for someone to work on the weekends. And so I went and interviewed for the position and got it. And then when I went to college, the group worked around my schedule, ended up being an assistant, then business manager, and then CFO. It's never been just a job, it's been my family, and I literally have grown up in the company. To consider the group being a startup before starts of school, I think is, is spot on. I, I say we're the new Belgium of real estate companies, but we've been that way since 1976. I think our concept was uh, not only very unusual, but uh, uh, threatening to some, I think, because they didn't understand it. Even getting set up, I remember when we met with Dave Wood, uh, uh, our attorney, to draw the papers and to 
to get organized uh, with the Real Estate Commission. The Real Estate Commission didn't know what to do with us. Larry's idea was different. He felt that the people who were highly motivated in real estate uh, needed to have the opportunity to become part of the organization and have an ownership interest. But that was not the, the normal way that these things were organized back in those days. In many respects, the group is an extension of his rock and roll band because putting himself through college, he played in a band and they always split all of the proceeds. And so he felt that was a way to keep people engaged in what they were doing. So we came up with the name The Group, but a lot of uh, our competitors laughed at that name and we actually decided that we would have some fun with that. So we created a series of ads. Uh, one was The Group is not a rock band, it's a real estate company. And another one was The Group's not an outlaw gang, it's a real estate company. And clearly we had name recognition very, very quickly. Our first goal was to prove that we could survive because everybody in, in the market told us we wouldn't. This was a concept that was doomed to fail. And so uh, we were very focused and very aligned our first year in the real estate business uh, to prove that we could do it. And we did. By the end of the first year, uh, we were the top firm in town and uh, we were feeling pretty good about ourselves. But the second year, we started to experience some challenges and we started to have uh, a lack of alignment. Those were tough times. And I remember one thing that really helped us through that was uh, there was a guy named Mike Vance with Disney and he had a workshop on how to get creative groups of people working together to achieve great things. And one of the things that he said was, making decisions is easy once you know what your values are. And I remember that really struck us. And we went back and sat down in, in our living room and began to put together our company values. And we got real clear on what we were, uh, who we were, where we wanted to go, and how we were gonna get there. I distinctly remember this group of individuals coming into the living room and it was amazing to see the genuine kind of, when the tire hits the pavement dedication that these guys had to each other personally and professionally. And I think that clarity all at once, people started to join our company like crazy. And they were starting to attract good people from other agencies to come to work for them. And it worked. That's what really makes it interesting, if it works. <laughs> people in, in what I would consider legitimate jobs, you know, with, <laughs> with a, a salary and a, and, a, and a 401k and insurance and stuff, they were, they were abandoning those jobs and coming to be a part of this thing. People like Harvey Nesbitt, who was the head of a savings and loan, and Dick Rule, who was vice president of a bank, and Linda Hopkins, who was working at the city of Fort Collins. One thing I enjoyed that was different than the city was the speed that things got done. Remember one time there was a group, new group sign and a new logo, and it was white. It was snowing, and you right. couldn't see the sign. I remember going to Susie and said, this is a government, Susie, I'd like to be on the committee for the new, to look at new signs. She goes, we got a new one yesterday. <laughs> no, we're not even going to do anything by committee. We got a bad sign, now we got a new sign. We actually hired world famous graphics designer Bob Kuntz and to design our current logo. Interestingly, in, in his company, he had a, a, a brilliant young designer by the name of Ann Vetter who actually designed our logo uh, at the time when she was working with Bob, but uh, she works at the group now. And I think it's still a terrific logo. I was thinking about it the other day. I drove by a sign. I thought, my gosh, that thing still works really well. I'm really proud of it and I'm proud of what we did, proud of what Ann did. Thank you for calling the group Real Estate. This is Debbie. Well, the group is really a family. We're not just a bunch of people that go to work every day. We're a real family. A lot of us started here young and probably never thought about how long we would really be here. I can remember the, the time I came to the group, September 1st, 1979, and uh, it was like it was yesterday. Most of us had one foot in the industrial age and one foot in the information age. We knew how to show up. We had some big wig real estate companies back there. But we kind of declared war on attracting and taking their best people. Uh, we 
Sunshine Patriots or are we Winter Soldiers? And we ended up being Winter Soldiers. In real estate, how many times do you see people bouncing from company to company to company to company? It's really unusual to see that many people that stick around and actually like each other. What it really boils down to is, is good people, quality people. The relationships with each other, I uh, had many, many uh, times to observe how they were on the same page, how they were trying to help one another out. If you look at, at the history, uh, probably that era from about 1978 when we started to get really clear on, on who we were and where we were going and our values. Uh, up through uh, about 1983, that five year period was just amazing growth. We really began to go from being just the leaders in real estate to be really dominating the market. And then in 1984, uh, I think there, there was another uh, big event at the group and that was uh, we were introduced to Marshall Thurber. He introduced us to Tony Robbins. Uh, it launched us on a path of, of exploration. Well, Larry just brought the whole world to the group. And it made a tremendous difference, I think. I think really did shape our, our culture in a very real way. We walked on coals, hot coals. <laughs> Fire walk. And then we started breaking boards. It looks all good and it was all designed to build a relationship with other brokers. I participated in all of that. I bent spoons, all of that that we did because I believed it so much and I was wise to believe it. We do a lot of firsts at the group and the first company to hire Tony Robbins, that, that says something. Uh, that whole era was really uh, an era where we really began to seek out mentors. Uh, through Marshall, I met Robert Kiyosaki, and he became a, a close friend of the group and would show up at our sales meetings. As another one of our mentors, Charlie Tremendous Jones, said, uh, you'll be the same today as you are tomorrow except for three things, the people you meet, the places you go, and the books you read. And we were really on a mission to meet the people. Keep in mind, we were very, very young, and having this kind of exposure to these kinds of thinkers was huge. And it started to really gel into a philosophy of business and a philosophy of life that later became the group way, uh, the ninja way, really a huge impact uh, on our company and then, uh, of course, on the lives of our people. Bending spoons, walking on fire, breaking boards, spinning washers. What kind of company is this, people were saying. We laughed at it. We thought it was silly, you know. And we went ahead and bent spoons. <laughs> Did you drink the Kool-Aid, that kind of stuff, you know, was on the street? I don't know if I'm the best I could be, but I am sure a heck of a lot better than what I would have been. Let's put it that way. <laughs> The early logo, the first logo, if you look closely into that logo, we didn't notice it at the time, but of course our competitors picked up on it when they were accusing us of being socialists. If you look closely at that logo, embedded in that logo is the peace symbol, which I actually thought was kind of neat, but they, they, they thought, well, there you go. Uh, and <laughs> they've got this logo with the peace sign, they're all equal owners, they're socialists. Uh, we made the front page of the New York Times Sunday Magazine in an article, uh, wasn't just about our company. Of course, when people got here, they found out it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like that at all, but uh, it was just a place uh, that everybody was having a great time, having fun, making money, helping people buy real estate. Because of all the things we were doing, it was starting to manifest itself in our real estate production, and our production was soaring. We, we had gone from a company that was clearly the market leader to clearly the market dominator. Uh, we didn't know this at the time, but we were being tracked. And one day I got a phone call from Steve Murray at Real Trends, And uh, he says, uh, we'd like for you to come to Dallas. We want to give your company an award. You're the most productive real estate company in America. Here's a traditional independent firm that's knocking it out of the park. You know, growth, productivity, profitability. Well, how are they doing that? And, and some people got confused and said, well, it's the ownership. And I would caution them. I said, no, no, it's a way they do things, and it's the standards they hold their people to. So there became a, a basically a pilgrimage to Colorado. Companies from all over the U.S. 
Some of them even from Canada were coming to find out uh, how we did this. Was it our ownership concept? Uh, was it our philosophy? Was it our belief in, in no limits? Uh, was it our staff and our systems? What was it that was causing this level of production? And that led to the creation of Ninja Selling. The group was Ninja. We didn't know it, but that's what we were. Since 1994, we've trained over 50,000 real estate agents throughout the United States, Canada, and Spain in the Ninja Selling System and the group way. I was so blown away by how far ahead he thought, like his intellectual capability, but more importantly, his heart. This opportunity to become what I call is a common goal of all of us, and that is just to be the very best that we can be. You know, in 1998, I got a phone call from uh, Howard Brenton uh, asking if I could be interviewed on his Star Power program. In that interview, uh, he wanted to know about Ninja Selling. Because of Howard and that interview, suddenly Ninja and the group were on the national and really the world stage. To have him at the head of our company, I feel like we all feel a sense of security almost because he's nationally known, you know, he's a huge deal, but to us, he's just Larry, you know, he was my professor at CSU and I can always count on him whenever I'm at a meeting or whenever I take Ninja, which by the way, I take every year. When we created our values, uh, uh, one of the things we created was our commitments. One of those commitments was a commitment to our community. So the group's been a tremendous supporter of United Way virtually from the time they were formed here in, in Larimer County. Just since 1996, they've contributed over $3,191,000 to United Way alone. That, that's just to United Way that went then to support our community. And now with group gifts, I find that just a remarkable resource for many, many needs in our community. One of the cool things that I've seen happen over the past couple years with group gives is now people are, are coming to us, organizations are coming to us and, and saying, we love who you are, we want to be a part of it, and w would you come and help us with this? Our community is a far better place today because the group real estate exists. And then the final commitment was a commitment to each other. You know, we're like a, a flock of geese. They fly in a V formation because they can fly 71% further, working together off the lift and thrust of each other and the, and the, the combined energy. The commitment to this company gives us the framework in which we can receive other strength and in which we can share our own. This is not just a company, this is definitely a family where everybody seems to have each other's back and you really sort of feel like you're part of something more than just going to a job. One of the, uh, the great groupies in our history and one of my best friends was Harvey Nesbitt. He had a big influence building this company and, and our direction. Unfortunately, we lost Harv uh, to cancer. Harvey lives on through Matt. Probably the neatest thing we did, and this is only because of the group, and it's only been supported by group people and, and their friends, and my friends, is the scholarship that we created in my dad's memory. And every year since he's passed, we've been able to give a full tuition scholarship, hoping that the best and the brightest are staying in Northern Colorado and, and working in the business community. I teach at the university. One of my students this semester, Avery, is the Harv Nesbitt Scholarship a recipient. It really got me to school, and then it got me connected with the group as well. I know that there's a, a legacy behind it too, and so it's a very big honor for me to be a part of that. There's nothing more valuable uh, for an academic institution than having people such as Larry Kendall and others come in and share their life experience, their knowledge uh, with the next generation. For me personally, uh, the group is pretty much my life. And our daughter, Kristen, referred to it sometimes as the middle child, which is kind of an appropriate thing. It was always there, and it was always something that Larry was always thinking about. You don't meet many people, and the group is notorious for this, that share virtually everything. And they share it for the betterment of this organization. Something that uh, Chris McElroy shared with me, it's an excerpt from a book, and <clears throat> the title is Building a Cathedral. Many of the cathedrals were built over extended periods of time, uh, in some cases, centuries. And every group made their mark on that cathedral. It wouldn't be finished in their lifetime. 
I've always felt that the group was a cathedral. And it's not going to be finished in my lifetime. I just hope that um, we've laid a good foundation. And I think we have. I think uh, Susie and, and I and the class of 76 and all the classes since, uh, we all made our mark on that cathedral. I mean, it was just blind faith and passion and energy that carried us forward. And we didn't know how it was going to turn out. And uh, this is where it ended up. <laughs> Pretty cool.